Welcome to our virtual worship service here t uh, today, and we uh, are so happy that you guys can join us here in, the, in your own homes to be with us. Um, I do want to remind you to look at the news blast that comes out weekly for announcements that we have of what's going on and changes that on our schedule and things like that. I want to thank everyone today for reading scripture, playing for us, and also um, taping this today. So welcome. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Almighty and most gracious God, we give you thanks for this day and for the calling, calling us to come together to worship. We gather to praise your name for your faithfulness and endurance for generation to generation. Signs of your faithfulness are all around us. Love, mercy, forgiveness, new life, and the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Help us claim your faithfulness as we seek to increase our faithfulness to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When I got here, I had a hard time exactly figuring out what I was going to do. A ministry of presence didn't seem to me in the beginning like a real ministry. I had been here about six months and I had made, I had become friends with this lady named Lena. And Lena um, was an alcoholic and she was in her late fifties and she woke up in the hospital one day and she, and, and, because she had passed out and they told her that if she passed out again, she was gonna die. Well, Lena was, that was a wake up call for her. And so she went home and she told her husband, who also was an alcoholic, that they had to quit drinking because she didn't wanna die. And he said, you can quit whatever you want, but I'm not quitting. So she left home. And she was homeless for a couple of months and that was when I met her. She had gotten a, an old apartment, but she didn't have enough money to pay all her bills. And so she came to me and she said, Hugh, she said, they're going to cut my lights off. And I, I said, wow, that, that's horrible. You know, I don't know what to say to that. And she said, I really need $120 to keep my lights on. And uh, she said, will you lend me the money? Well, I didn't have $120 and didn't know where to get it. I'd only been here a couple of months myself. And, and I said, Lena, I, I just can't do it. And she heard, I can't do it, and, and interpreted that as I wouldn't do it. And she got mad at me. And she said, Hugh, she said, I thought you were my friend. If you were my friend, you lend me the $120. And I don't know if it was luck or the Holy Spirit or whatever you want to put it down to, but I instantly knew the right thing to say. I said, Lena, I can't keep your lights on, but I'll come sit with you in the dark after they turn them off. And there was this long silence, and then she perked up, and she said, really? I said, yeah, really. And she said, I don't have anybody that would do that. You know, the more I think about that story, the more I see that, to me, that's who God is, you know? Not a God who gets us out of crap, but a God who sits with us in the crap. Um, I spent a lot of time talking against the idea of a prosperity gospel because I don't believe in a Jesus that will give you money to keep your lights on. I believe in a Jesus that will sit with you in the dark after they've been turned off.
Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 14, 22 through 33. Jesus walks on the water. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When the evening came, he was there alone. But by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But he immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, it, if, if, it, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Let us bow our heads in prayer. O oh, gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. If you're into fashion or social media, then you probably know that the market for sneakers and athletic shoes is, is huge. Sneakers make a, a major fa fashion statement these days. The most fashionable sneakers, of course, are the ones that are designed by or, or um, maybe even made by the celebrities and athletes. But maybe you didn't hear of the sneakers that came out in 2019 that were designed uh, for the ultimate celebrity of all, Jesus, Son of God. Yep, you heard me right. Last year, a pair of designers created a whole different kind of fashion statement when they brought a pair of Nike Air Max 97s and redesigned them as Jesus shoes. The Jesus shoes came with little gold crucifix hanging from the laces, or laces of the shoe and, pockets, uh, and had pockets of, of holy water from the Jordan River that had been prayed over by a priest. The designer claimed that they made the shoes to uh, mock the idea of, of shoe companies partnering with celebrities. And who, <clears throat> who is a bigger celebrity than Jesus? One of the designers um, behind the Jesus shoes said, we asked ourselves, what would a shoe uh, collaboration with, with Jesus look like? Obviously, it should let you walk on water. Well, how do you do that? You pump holy water into the pockets of a pair of Air Max 97s. And with that, you got Jesus shoes. The holiest collaboration ever. The Jesus Shoes sold for $1,425. Our text today is about Peter trying and ultimately failing to walk on water. But it's about so much more than that. Because the most important thing to notice in today's scripture passage is that it isn't that Jesus walked on water or that Peter took a few baby steps on the Sea of Galilee. The most th important thing to notice is that Peter got out of the boat in the first place. Peter trying to walk on water is, per is a perfect image of what it means to become a follower of Christ. It's that perfect image of what it means to, to commit your life to Jesus. Notice that all the disciples were in the boat, but only Peter took the steps of faith to go to Jesus. I'm really glad so many of you are watching online worship services and you're uh, so generous in supporting the work of the, of the two churches. But are a 
part of, of the church for a lot of, but you're part of the church for a lot of different reasons. I'm not saying that to judge anyone. I'm thrilled that you are watching and supporting your church, and I hope you experience the presence of God while you do it. I hope you find what you're looking for. Some of you may be watching because um, it appeases your family members. Some of you are, are doing it out of curiosity or a feeling of maybe guilt. Some of you came because, are watching because you want to raise your children connected to a church or you're looking for, for hope or comfort. Those are all very good reasons. But just watching worship online isn't going to answer the questions or heal your hurts or change your life. Being in a relationship and serving Christ will make a real difference in how you experience life. As I said, I'm thrilled so many of you have been watching and worshiping online. I, I pray and, and, and with all my heart that today's service brings us all closer to Jesus. That's what we're all really looking for, even if we are not aware of it. That's what Peter was looking for, too. So let's read Matthew 14, verses 22 through 29, to see if we can learn what Peter learned as he tried to walk to Jesus on the water. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples go into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed, he then went up on a mountain by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land. Buffeted by the waves, because wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, uh, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, and they said, It's a ghost. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. We can learn from Peter in this story is to come to Jesus even if, we, uh, if we've got unanswered questions. If you are holding off on making that decision to strengthen your relationship with Jesus until you sit, uh, sit in on that one dis, um, uh, discussion that answers all your questions about life, your life of faith, then you will never get out of the boat. It's never going to happen. Nobody has all the answers. I want to tell you a very personal story about my second year um, in seminary. During that time um, in seminary, um, just before, uh, the summer before, my grandmother died. She was um, 92 years old. And shortly after that, my aunt died of cancer at the age of 53. And a couple months after that, my uncle died at the age of 47 after having a heart transplant at age 45 and then dying at age 47 of um, cancer. Two months after that, my nephew was killed in an auto accident. He had been driving on a gravel road, he lost control, and the car went in the ditch, and he was thrown through the windshield. It was two months after that, that on Christmas Eve, we sat in the hospital with the doctors telling us that my, my dad needed emergency surgery to get rid of the blood clot that had formed in his artificial artery that goes from his heart down to his lungs, and they didn't know if he would make it through it. He did. And as I started that second semester of seminary, after all of these tragic things happened, I really didn't know what I believed and had lots and lots of questions. It is through struggling through those questions that I became um, more aware of my faith and my relationship with, with God, and it strengthened. You see, I respect anyone who confronts and wrestles with questions of faith. An unexamined, untested faith can't stand up to the storms of life. 
The truth is that Jesus left his disciples behind with unanswered questions. He wanted them to trust him with our lives. He, he, he wanted them to draw us to God with love, not compel us to by force or fear. He wanted us to have the free will to choose to follow him or not. We come to Jesus even if we're in the middle of the storm. Even in the middle of my storm, with all of that going around on my second semester, uh, or my second year of, of, of seminary, I had lots of questions, but I stuck with it and I struggled through it. And that's what Jesus is calling us to do. Notice that in this scene of Jesus asking Peter to walk on water, it takes place in the middle of a storm. Matthew says the boat was buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. It would be remarkable for, for um, Peter to try to walk on the water, uh, on the waves if the sea was calm, but, uh, but that day uh, it wasn't calm. It was in the middle of a storm. Even more, it was even more remarkable. Life has its storms, doesn't it? How do you respond to a storm? The other 11 disciples took shelter in the boat. Only Peter believed that, that it was better to, to brave the storm with, with Jesus than to stay in the boat without him. Author and speaker Palm, Palmer Churchin tells an excursion um, a rafting in the Zamba River in Zambwe with, with its, within its borders. It was a scary undertaking. The river's huge rapids are, fill, are, are fed from the, the rushing waters of the Victoria Falls, the, the longest waterfall in the world. As the men prepared to set it off into the rapids, um, um, their river a guide gave them some last minute instructions that were a bit discerning. He, he began with these words. He said, when the raft flips. Note he didn't say if the raft flips. He said when the raft flips. He said, he went on to tell them, stay in the rough waters in the middle of the river. Why did um, he tell them to stay in the rough waters in the middle of the river because he said that if they go out into the edges where the water is, is calmer, there are where the crocodiles are. Wow. I believe that a, a warning like that would keep me in the middle of the river or out of the river entirely. Palmer made the point that God calls a church out beyond our comfort zone still and, 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 this, and, and, and stay out of the still stagnant water. God calls us to follow God into the, the churning rapids of the world's needs to make a difference with, with our lives. Many of us wait to make a decision about how seriously we take the call to follow Jesus. We decide to wait until we're older. We'll, we'll wait until we have kids. We'll wait until we go get our heads straight. We wait until we are not so busy. We'll wait until we feel a little more worthy or until we get our spiritual act together until the storm passes. That's when we're will make a decision about, about Jesus. But when things aren't so crazy, here's the problem there, always be storms. No matter what your friends post on Instagram or Facebook, many of them are experiencing their own storms right now. The fact will never change. But if Jesus really is the Son of God, if Jesus really is the way, the truth, and the life, then isn't the purpose of our life found in facing our storms with Jesus? Don't let unanswered questions stand between you and Jesus. That is what faith is all about. Don't let the storms of life stand between you and Jesus. Notice that Peter almost made it. He took the first few baby steps of faith and then he let fear and circumstances overwhelm him. 
We can't stand in judgment of Peter. We do the exact same thing. We start to get out of the boat, but then doubt intercedes. Or we're afraid of, of looking foolish. Or we let our busy schedules interfere. What would Peter have experienced if he had made it all the way to Jesus? Imagine the abundant life he could have began experiencing at that very moment. In really trusting Jesus. Certainly he would never have denied Jesus like he um, had um, completely uh, completed that walk right then. Think for a moment. What does Jesus have in store for you if you grow your relationship with Jesus? What is holding you back? The truth is that Jesus could have answered our every question about God and life and death and suffering. But he didn't. He could have calmed every storm and prevented um, his disciples' uh, fear in, in that first place. But he didn't. He could have held Peter's hand and let him do a little dance across the Sea of Galilee, but he didn't. He didn't make it easy for Peter then, and he doesn't make it easy for us now. There's a reason for that. Faith requires trust, and, and love requires sacrifice. Every great relationship is built on trust and love. And that's what God wants with you, a relationship. God is doing God's part. God came in the, in the flesh, in the person of Jesus Christ, to show us the quality of His life. Now it's time for us to do, that, do our part. Every faith journey, no matter how rocky, uh, begins with getting out of the boat and, and walking towards Jesus. Are you ready to take that step? Even if it's a baby step like Peter's. Jesus is waiting for you. Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Oh God, life seems so crazy sometimes. We love the smooth times when all is well, but we have serious problems with, with wind and waves. We want you to fill our sails with a lovely breeze and guide our little boats across the glassy seas, but you know that life isn't just glassy seas and gentle breezes. Sometimes things get rough. You call us to reach out to take our focus off our own panic and, and place our trust in your love. Then you ask us to reach out to others with the same kind of love and compassion that you have given to us. Today we come to you with burdens and cares. Our seas are not calm, but you offer to us a lifeline. Be with us. Guide our lives. Give us courage and hope. Strengthen us to truly be your disciples. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.
Neither wind nor waves can, can uh, swamp you. Place your trust in God's mercy and love. Go into the world in peace, confident in God's presence and love for all of creation. Amen. Thank you.